Um, so we are going to move into this. If you have something that you want to take notes, let's go ahead and take that out. If you would prefer not to, that's fine. I did upload the, the PowerPoint onto Schoology, so if you want to access it there and follow along that way, you're welcome to do that. that energy is emitted 
and then how it can be useful in different spots of our body. Um, what we can do then is we have an emission spectra for each black body. And depending on what that emission spectra is, will help us determine the temperature of, of that uh, object. And so what happens here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and then I'll jump back. So this is what it looks like. And so each object has a spectra that's going to be emitting from it. Again, whether it is being, whether it's creating its own energy or it's absorbing and re-emitting, it has this, this spectra that can be, or that it's emitting from electromagnetic rays. And depending on where the peak of that, the, that line falls um, will depend on, it'll tell the wavelength of that, um, of that object. And depending on kind of, you, you, as you have more intensity, you're having higher temperatures as well. You won't need to recreate this graph. It's one that you'll just need to be able to look at and identify and and I'll go into some stuff that goes along with that a little bit later. So what happens here is that depending on the, you can take the temperature of a star and you can calculate what that peak is going to be and then where that is. So if you have a star that's burning at 6,000 Kelvin, that wavelength, the peak wavelength is the one that you would recognize it with, would fall within that visible category and you'd be able to calculate it and identify it as well. We'll do a little bit more on that later. So as you're looking at each of these things, you've got, it, it helps us identify what's available and then be able to talk about it from there. Uh, and when we look at this graph and it's the intensity, it's sort of an arbitrary intensity. It's not, it's not a specific one. Um, it's just you're saying, is it essentially brighter or not as bright? So we'll come back to that in a little bit. The thing that we work with the most here, uh, and we actually may come back to that on, on Tuesday when I see it. Um, the thing that we work with the most here is this idea of the Stefan-Boltzmann law. And some of you worked on this for your general assessment, um, or had it part, be a part of that depending on what the question was. And so there's a few different pieces that we work at with this. Um, we talk about intensity, and this sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant is 5.67 times 10 to the negative eight um, watts per meter squared per thousand to the four. And any, any constant, it's always just taking from what we have the relationship to being able to say that it's equal. And we always have a mess of units that essentially gets us to the 18 watt here. So all these units do is watts gets us to the watts per watt per hour. And then area and temperature fourth area is the squared Kelvin to the fourth, so these negative ones cancel that out there. So I'm going to show you um, kind of generally what we're talking about with this. The Stefan Boltzmann law um, allows us to kind of figure out what's happening from a given source and then be able to use it accordingly from there. So I'm going to turn into the light. So here we have a light bulb and it's radiating out energy in all directions. Most directions, we'll say all. Think about this in the way of a star. So a star, sun's hanging out in space and radiating out energy. Well, how do we figure out how much is there? Well, to first of all, figure out how much energy is being, or how much power is being emitted from the surface of the sun, we take the sigma, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 times the surface temperature to the fourth, and that will be always be in Kelvin, times the surface area of that star, so the sun. That will give you how much power is being radiated. So if we were to take that, so we have this right here. Yeah, that's important. We want to know how much power is being radiated. But that power doesn't matter much. It's nice to 
know, it's helpful. But it's not useful in its full form when you're standing out here. And it's different if you're standing here, or if you're standing here, or if you're in the back of the room, you can still see it, you're still receiving some power from it, but that's going to be varied based on how far you are. And so then that sort of brings us, I'm gonna jump over this. Um, that brings us to, uh, not that part. That brings us to some stuff I'm gonna write on the board. Um, so that brings us to this idea of kind of what we can experience here. So because the intensity here is different. And so when we talk about the intensity of a given spot, we're looking at how far away we are, but all of that power isn't coming right here. So if I'm standing, if I have this object here, my little marker, the intensity that's felt right here is the same that's felt if it's right here, or right here, or right here, or right there, or right there, at that same given radius all the way around. So we're taking this power. Now it's not, it wouldn't be over this bulb area, but oh, it's that amount of power doesn't change that's being generated. But what changes is how far out it's spread. And so this is just a portion of how it's spread out here. If I move this out here, again, here's my radius. The intensity that I feel is the same here, or here, or here, or somewhere under the table if it's not there. And we're looking at what we can find in that regard. And so we would be looking at how this power spreads out to this whole three-dimensional sphere. And we experience the intensity there, and it can continue to go out. So the thing you have to keep in mind as we're looking at this is we're talking about intensity kind of at two different spots. When we're looking at, sorry, wrong thing. When we're looking at the power here and we're looking at the area to determine the power, we're looking specifically at the area above, right, of the surface of the, of the sun or whatever star we're dealing with. When we're talking about the intensity that is experienced at another spot, the intensity on the Earth or hanging out in a spacecraft in the middle of space, we're talking about how this power has now spread out to a much larger area. And so we are going to do, um, we're going to do a problem that's going to look at that, and I'll stick that up here, and then I'm going to, um, I'll stick it up so you can see it. If you have it, if you're looking online, you can um, follow it, but I'll keep going back and forth up with it. I'm going to write down the information here, and then I'm going to put the screen up and we're gonna kind of work through and I wanna talk about how that relates to what I was just talking to here. So it says the super, science, super giant star Betelgeuse has a surface temperature of about 2,900 K. Not the easiest marker. Um, and a radius of 3 times 10 to the 11th meters. Um, determine the, or sorry, Yep, determine how much energy Betelgeuse radi radiates each second. So we're just getting joules per second per watt. Determine the intensity of Betelgeuse's radiation at its surface. And determine the intensity of radiation at a location that is that that is three times to the eleventh meters from its surface. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So we'll go. So I'm going to take this part down. I have the data written here. Um, before we do that, I'll go back and take a look at this. And then I'll go ahead and, um, so these are the different pieces that we'll be looking at. So looking at those equations that we just talked about, the first one we have, so the first thing it's asking is for us to figure out the intensity at the surface. And so the intensity at the surface equals sigma times T to the fourth. So at, for any given star, we can look at and say, okay, well, it's a temperature. 
what's the intensity on the surface? And so sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. Um, if you like memorizing your constants, it's 5, I, I like it 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. Keeping in mind that it's a negative. And then we have watts, we have watts per meter squared uh, T to the fourth, T to the negative fourth. And then we have this temperature here of 2900 K. And we'll take that to the fourth. So that ends up giving us our, when we calculate that out, T to the fourth will cancel out and then we'll be left with a psi k to the fourth. k to the fourth will cancel out, and then we'll be left with watts per meter squared because of our intensity. So, sure enough, if we go 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8, times 2900 to the fourth, only the 2900 is going to go to the fourth. We end up with 8.01.6, whatever, a whole bunch of stuff times 10 to the negative 20 seconds. That is not right. Huh. 5.67, I put a negative where I shouldn't. Do the negative 8 times 2900 fourth, not negative fourth. There we go. Um, 4.0, oh, I want to say 4.0 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the intensity on the surface. Anytime you have a temperature, you can, you can figure out what the intensity on the surface is by following, just by taking that temperature to the fourth times the signal there. Then it asks us to figure out how much power is being radiated. And so remember that uh, intensity is power over area. The equation that we use for this most of the time is E sigma A T plus one. Um, and so sometimes, and I'll talk about, sometimes you'll see another letter in here and I'll talk about that in a minute. So we're just taking um, T equals sigma, so 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. The area, remember, is um, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And so in this situation, we're using the surface area coming from the bulb, and so we'll say, or from the, the star here, so we'll have 4 pi, and it's 3 times 10 to the 11. only square that part, that area, and then again 2900 to the floor. So, all we're doing is taking the answer that we just got and multiplying it by the area. So times 4. Times 10 to the 30th. So it's a star, it's giving off a lot of power. So if we take and turn the light on here, what we're looking at is the amount of power. So that's how much power is coming from. If this is the star that's hanging out out in space, that's how much power is coming from that star based on what the temperature is and then how much. So the temperature got us the intensity, intensity times the surface area of the star gives us how much power is radiating from it. Yeah? Was, was there a thing called the Lord's Law that was Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, roughly. Um, it, it generally, like, 
when people do it in an IA setting, sometimes they'll go back and use that. Because this one's nice and spherical, it works, um, sort of, because we're dealing with smaller numbers and it, it just sort of gets a little bit sketchy. It's not quite as, as exact. Um, but yes, it works. And then a lot of times if someone's using like a shop lamp, that can be difficult to kind of estimate what the actual radius is if it were to be a spherical object, so that can get goofy as well. Um, so then, we want to know, then the next thing is, so that's how much power is coming from that star. Then it says, at a spot that's this far away from the surface, then what happens? So now we're saying that we have, here's our star, we're talking about somewhere else. I'm going to exaggerate it because it is just the same as the radius for that, but it's somewhere else here now. So now all of this isn't coming to this single spot. It's spreading out in this huge area that's in the surrounding. So now we're going to say, and the question specifically says, determine the intensity of the radiation at a location that is that far away. So there's two things about this to know. First of all, the power stays the same. So we know that intensity equals power over area. So the power being emitted by that star doesn't change. So whatever you have here is the power that's coming here for 0.5 times 10 to the 30th watt. But the area that we're taking a look at for this, now it's farther out. So we're still using four pi r squared. However, the radius we're looking at is from the center of the star out to the point where we are. So because, I'm gonna draw this right here. Because the center of the star so the edge is 3 times 10 to the 11th meters. And then we're talking about a spot here that's that same distance away. The radius that we'll use in this situation is combined here. So it's, we're going from the center of the star all the way out to where it is. So that's our new radius. It'll be 6 times 10 to the 11th meters or meters. So we'll say four pi, this time we're using six times 10 to the 11th um, because we always take it from the center of the star. Now in reality, a lot of times the radius of the object falls within, like falls outside of the uncertainty of the, the distance. So a lot of times your distance is something that's like 10 to the 12th meters, cool. And the radius is something that's like 10 to the sixth. Well, you're probably going to have like two or three big things, so that 10 to the 6 becomes insignificant in that whole distance that you're looking at. In this situation, because we're dealing with such a small distance from that, from where that star is, we'll, we'll get those in there. And sometimes it's just looking to think it through and check it out. It's not going to be the end of the world and yeah, make some sort of our, our whole state of mind in lots of situations, I'm not gonna push it in like trying to, trying to get too many things in there about that. So in fact, I think um, the questions that I have, I make sure that they would be insignificant. So now that we have this, uh, this ends up being squared because it's um, four pi r squared. So now we can take that number and we can say divided by four pi We end up at this point that the intensity at that point would be 1.0 times 10 to the 6 watts per meter squared. And the farther out you get, the less that intensity will be because it's spreading out over a larger area to that kind of imaginary sphere. And even though you're at a single spot on that imaginary sphere, so here's our source and you're here, that power is still spreading out to so many different places. And so that's sort of the meat of what we're looking at because being able to know and understand what's happening from what, how the sun is emitting or any other star could be emitting and then how that affects the intensity of where we're at, then we can take that and that's the part then that we can use in the way of solar that becomes important in that regard. Um, I'll step out actually for a second. I'll turn this off. I'm going to step out just for a second so you can see.
anything you missed, you can take it down. You can just take a picture of it, that's fine. Because then I'm going to pull the screen back down. And we'll keep going. I have not talked at a teacher level in like, well, 401 days. So I'm like, oh. All right, am I good? Can I do this? Any questions so far? Let's talk about emissivity for a moment. Emissivity is the ratio of power that's emitted by an object um, to the power emitted by a black body at the same temperature. So when you're talking about a star, it will always have 100% emissivity. It's giving off it, it behaves in what we call as a perfect black body and it emits uh, based on the power that it's generating. When you're talking about another object that draws in the heat and then re-radiates it, it, it will have an emissivity attached to it. So it, for whatever it, it draws in, it might only emit 85% of that or 25% of that or whatever it might be. And so one of the things we have to consider here is like of what we can, what is ideal, how much is reflected, how much actually gets to the surface, of which, from what gets to the surface, how much is actually re-emitted back. And so there's lots of different statistical models. So we're looking at, so it looks like this. We say emissivity is equal to the power that, the P is the power of that object that's being emitted. And so, and then divided by uh, what it would be for a perfect black body at that same temperature. And so it brings us to this equation here. Sometimes, um, let me see, in the data book, I don't remember if they have, I thought I had one right there. I don't remember if they have both of them. They've oscillated between keeping both of them or just keeping this one. If, it's, if no emissivity is ever given and you're not calculating for it, the emissivity would be one, and you would just calculate sigma into the emissivity. If it's talking about a star, the emissivity is one. It is a perfect black body, so comparing it to another perfect black body would be the same. And so you would have that in there. Keep this in mind then, that there's this other thing called albedo. And albedo is the ratio of solar power scattered to the total incidence. With emissivity, you're talking about the amount that is, is actually given off. With albedo, you're talking about the part that's reflected, and the rest of that is what can be absorbed. This is what's going to impact. This is, there's this, we can kind of go down a whole path of, we want to focus just on one thing of, of global warming. We can look at um, how melting of, of the ice covering affects the way that, that the heat can be absorbed because the ice covering actually has a really high albedo, so a lot of the, the energy is reflected. And so not only with that melting are other things happening, it's also having a lower albedo, so it, it absorbs more of the energy coming in. So it's sort of like this double impact that as the ice melts, it's not reflecting as much of the sun's energy away, and so then it, that's more absorbed and then continues that cycle. So even just from a smaller standpoint, just focusing on this, it ends up kind of becoming exponential, exponential in the other things. So, um, but we're looking at how much, is, how much power is reflected over what is, what is incident. So if you have a low albedo, you're actually able to keep a lot of the power. If you have a low emissivity, actually not keeping a lot of the power. So it's the verbiage here gets really tricky sometimes. What this can look like is something, well, in the way of the sun, it looks something like this. Um, the sun comes in at 100%. About 30% is absorbed or is reflected by the atmosphere right away. About 20% is absorbed by the atmosphere, and 50% of that which is coming in is actually making it to the surface. 
And if we look at, and that's just on average. If we look at some of these, oceans have um, albedo of about 10%. Ice has albedo of 90%. So 90 for when, when the sun, energy from the sun is coming in and hitting ice, about 90% of it is reflected. And so it's not being absorbed by the ice to melt it. Um, however, when you talk about oceans, the, it's a low albedo, which sounds weird because I know if you look at the sun, you see that bouncing, like the reflection's really bright. But on a large scale, it's, it's, uh, it's really dark. Like if you take an overview look, and so it absorbs, it takes in a lot of that energy and actually only reflects about 10% of it. Um, so this, this plays into kind of the overall way that we experience the sunlight. Um, I have another uh, problem that we can look at that also deals with albedo. Albedo ends up being just like another step of this. The problem is not necessarily the, the whole piece of everything, it's just that you have albedo, you have emissivity, you have your atmosphere and the surroundings there, and all the different pieces kind of go together. Um, and so that's what your problems will be focused on this week. Um, the other piece that you'll be looking at, and I'll stick a little video up on it, it's not anything too crazy, is um, just looking at that graph and being able to identify where different things are. And so I'll put that up there. We can talk a little bit about that on Tuesday when we're in. So I'm going to actually end here. We have about five minutes left to mass to kind of work through our new like protocols and getting things ready before you go. Any questions before I close this up? I will put everything online. I have uh, prep during fourth or during first hour for us today, uh, so I'll get that stuff up before the end of the day. Two things I need you to do, please. Actually, three.